Elizabeth first in the mid-70s when I moved to Dothan. Elizabeth worked in retail banking and I was in the mortgage division banking and we became uh, professional friends because we were involved in, in banking and also in some community projects. After Elizabeth was hired with the association, I believe in the early 80s, um, we sort of went from a professional uh, relationship into more of a, a friendship because she encouraged me to become more involved with our association. Well, in 2004, I decided I wanted to get involved with the Home Builders Association and I wanted to be active in doing that. So I came by the office here and that's when I met Miss Elizabeth and I uh, told her my desire to get involved and um, that's all it took for her to set the hook and uh, she reeled me in and immediately started recruiting me to serve on the, on the board. And um, so I learned real quick um, that you know, you just don't say no to Miss Elizabeth. She was more than just an EO filling a, doing a job and I was more than just a builder. You know, she, she, you got to be her friend and, and she was one of my good friends. What comes to mind is just the times I was able to sit in her office and those chairs in there and just sit and, and talk to her and get to know her. She was always, um, like I'd said before, just treating me like family and uh, she always had a sincere concern for me and my family, my business. Um, so we would have a lot of time just to talk uh, church, we'd talk politics, maybe two things you shouldn't talk about, but um, it was something that, you know, we enjoyed sharing together. And when I think of Elizabeth, she's the perfect Southern Belle lady uh, that you could think of, just uh, very uh, charming and very, uh, well put together, everything had to be just so and just right, and um, but always likes to have fun and was kind. Um, just all good memories when I think of Elizabeth. And that's the first thing I think of when I think of Miss Elizabeth. It's what it's just a charming Southern lady that she was. Um, but she was also a very tough lady, very persistent. Um, but. Uh, very intelligent lady. Elizabeth was a good steward of the association's finances. She treated our monies just as if it was her own. When she came, as I said, in the early 80s, it was during a period of time that our industry was not doing as well. And our reserves and membership was at an all-time low, I believe. She recognized that the only way to increase our reserves was to increase our membership. So she worked very closely with our membership committee. She made calls with them. And as the members were added, our reserves increased. And she always treated our members with utmost respect. She encouraged them to attend meetings, encouraged them to invite other members. And uh, as time went on, our membership increased and so did our reserves. No matter how good or how bad the times were, Elizabeth was the person that kept our local association going year after year. Elizabeth was such a forward thinker. She, she also recognized the need for skilled labor in our industry. She, she visited the schools, the colleges, to ask them to encourage them and ask them to add some additional building trades. She loved people and she loved the, you know, the kids. And so them getting to come in and interview and her interview them and, and then year after year, quarter or, or semester after semester, they would come and bring their grades to her and she would, she would, she would require a face-to-face -face, you know, time with her and uh, she just loved it. With the scholarship program and our student loan program, she managed the money so well that we were able to provide education and so that uh, many, many people could go into the building trades. Well, when I think of the Hall of Fame, you know, oftentimes we think about numbers and of course, you know, 28 years, that's a long time to serve anywhere, but especially with home builders. I mean, we're a tough crowd, so the fact that she was able to put up with us for 28 years should be a slam dunk. The funniest story, of course, I, and I wish Russell could tell the story because he does a Miss Elizabeth Wheelock impression very, very well. And uh, But it was one of our meetings, and it was down at either Gulf Shores or somewhere, and 
Miss Elizabeth and, a, and another one of our ladies, well, she was president, Miss Edna Bragg, uh, were coming down to the association. And along the way to Gulf Shores, somehow or another, Miss Elizabeth was driving and the gas pedal stuck down in full speed. And so Elizabeth is weaving in and out of traffic, blowing her horn for everyone to get out of her way. And Miss Edna is standing on the floorboard trying to unstick the accelerator. They finally came to a safe stop out on the side of the road on Highway 98. When Miss Elizabeth got all settled down, her she got there, her hair was all messed up, and, and she was telling us telling the story. Oh Lord, I couldn't get that thing, and I tried to put it in neutral, and we were going back, and, it, and, and her story is just her telling it over and over again. I laughed every time she told the story. It's just a great story how they survived going through red light after red light. But she still looks stylish. She had that scarf around her neck and she didn't miss the meeting. She was so proud of that. Again, this was, this was not just a job, you know. She, she really loved our association. She loved the business. And she had a, a family and a great husband and children and and had a, a life outside of that, but, but she, for someone who never swung a hammer or worked in the industry, she was the industry. I believe she had a Hall of Fame character, and this, the way that she is respected in our community um, is deserving of a Hall of Fame. I'd just like to tell her family and her friends that it was a blessing and honor to know Miss Elizabeth, and, um, And I want to thank our Home Builders Association, you know, for inducting her into the Hall of Fame. Um, she's well deserving of it. I've always felt honored and humbled to have been a friend and also um, personally and um, professionally and business-wise. Elizabeth was just uh, a very unique person. She, she, I learned from her that even with all the adversities in life, Sometimes they do make you stronger. And I know that her family is very, very proud of her. And she loved her, she loved her family, and she loved the association. I think that that's the, the, the best part of Elizabeth, is that she loved, dearly loved people. And uh, it showed in her kindness and her love for others. And uh, uh, I just think that uh, it, it shined through her all the time, every day. And she made you feel special. And I think that's the best part of Elizabeth. I got involved through my father. Uh, you know, growing up, that was all they were talking about was selling homes and selling new homes and developing land. and. So I heard it around the supper table, and he had a, a home building business with his with some partners, and and uh, I got involved in that. Uh, when I first got into this business, uh, interest rate was around 14 percent, and I stepped out with a, with a pre-sale, and most folks said I'd lost my mind and wouldn't make it for a year, and I believe, halfway believed them. I didn't get cards printed up to have been in business for about a year and didn't get incorporated, the bank made me. Uh, but it uh, it's turned out good. Well, I first met Steve when he became a member of the Huntsville Association, and he was um, invigorating right from the start. Steve brings us some energy that, uh, you know, whether it's membership, selling raffle tickets, whatever, uh, his enthusiasm and love for the association just shines through. And I think that gets other people, it spreads to them. It, I know it spreads to me, get me excited about things that uh, I need to be doing for the association. Steve is the most uplifting person you ever want to be around. Um, he has taught me to laugh at the small things. Um, he, I don't think he ever meets a stranger and don't sweat the small stuff. And he is just in, an amazing person, an enthusiastic, an enthusiastic person to be around and fun. And he makes everything he does fun. And you can be in the worst mood in the world and if Steve Steele walks in the room, 
you are going to get a smile on your face before he leaves. Always willing to serve, um, enthusiastic, um, how much he loves the association, his family, uh, his friends, um, just um, never says no uh, when asked to do, whether it's uh, cheer a council locally or on the state level, you know, pick up a special project, Steve takes it and run with, runs with it. Well, from the impact that Steve's had on the HBAA and the building industry in general has been huge. Um, he is a avid promoter of membership, which of course strengthens numbers, which benefits all of us over the entire state and, and our local association as well as the state and the national. And that's evidenced by his statesman, statesman level spike um, that he is. Steve has been very active uh, coming up the ladder, uh, working on committees and like I say, membership, um, selling raffle tickets, selling whatever, uh, to support ABPAC, Bill Pack. Um, he's always been there, active, uh, did a great job as president all the way up through the ladder. Um, just um, like a lot of our other great leaders, uh, Steve was there and you could count on him. I think Steve has probably raised more money for ABPAC or, or almost as much as anyone within the organization. If you tell him to sell 10 tickets, he's going to sell 20. And if you incentivize him a little bit, he'll sell 30. So you just have to, but I mean, he is just always there. He's engaged. And, and whatever task he's given, he will go for it 110%. Membership farmer one year, uh, he did, how we decided to do a farmer theme, I have no idea, but that was what he wanted to do. We hadn't been in our building long, so the carpet was new. and. Steve decided that he was going to uh, bring in a goat, a real live goat. Anyway, he comes in and he's dressed like a farmer with his long beard on, he has his overalls on, and he's holding this baby goat. And I, I was sitting at the head table and unbeknownst to me, he had dropped these little black round candies on the floor that looked like something that would come from a goat. And all of a sudden he said, oh no, Lynn, look what's happened. And he picks these things up off the floor and he pops them in his mouth. <laughs> Just about at a stroke. <laughs> the amount of hours and time that he has put into the dedication for our state association uh, makes this award uh, uh, hopefully special for him. Um, I know it's special to be in that group and uh, and it's well deserved. I think Steve deserves to be inducted into the Hall of Fame because he is the epitome of a member that you want to have within the organization. But I never dreamed I'd ever be going in this Hall of Fame. And uh, you know, I'm just so moved and honored to go into this. That it's, it's amazing. It's just because of the group of people that's in it now. It's been a um, honor for me to get to know Steve, consider him a good friend. Uh, we call, we, you know, ask about subs, uh, different things, different building things, uh, ridden to state meetings together. Uh, just, um, it's an honor for him and an honor well deserved. Steve, congratulations on this award. I cannot think of anyone that's any more deserving than you are. In the time that I've known you, you've given 110% in everything that you've done, not only to the building industry, but to the community as a whole. I consider you a very dear friend, and I hope that we remain friends for many years to come. So congratulations, Steve, and if I had a glass of wine right now, I would toast you for that. Congratulations, Steve, uh, an honor that's very well deserved. Um, I know you'll share this with Miriam and the rest of your family, and it's congratulations. Uh, I'd like to thank my wife and my family um, for putting up with me when I was out of town, and uh, my wife making, making this part of her life too. Uh, we both miss high school reunions and weddings and friends' kids' weddings, and to make the commitment to to do this and uh, you know without her I couldn't have, couldn't have done it and putting up with me on my trips and uh, when I have to be gone and uh, you know also the 
the people that I work with, uh, my office help, and then uh, my superintendent, Terry Lukens, who's been with me for 27 years. I like to thank my local association. If, it, if they hadn't got me interested in, in this, then uh, you know, I never would have made it to the state. I've been in this industry for 41 years, and I have no plans to retire anytime soon. Uh, I'm still hard at it and still work more hours than most folks do. Uh, so I, I think this is about as great as honor I'll ever receive in the building business.